Hello, good people. How's everyone doing? First off, I want to give a huge thank you for all the people who've subscribed. And I know many of y'all are subscribed mainly for the VFX tutorials. If you're just for the actual videos um, with the effects in them, don't fret. We have two videos um, filmed and in the latter stages of editing. Anyways, let's move on. Today we're going to do a simple yet effective blood hit. As you'll notice, I've already opened up After Effects. And um, what I like to try to do is I try to keep everything fairly organized. Even a short clip like this can get a little clustered after adding in all the visual effects elements. What I like to do is I like to imagine that I am exhibit and the footage is a car. I got to pimp it out. Just like on the show, you gotta strip it clean and clutter it before you do any work to it. Then you put a coffee maker in the trunk and you're good to go. Anyways, now that it's uncluttered, let's do some work. I take my footage that I'm gonna be doing some work on and I throw it into a new composition. And then I just rename it. And when doing blood hits, most of the time you're going to want to track the footage. Normally, I would just uh, do this with the tracker inside of After Effects, but the footage is so unsteady that I would, that would be virtually impossible. So what I decided to do is open up uh, Mocha. Uh, Mocha is a fantastic 2D tracker that comes along with After Effects. Mocha is very simple and uh, very easy to use. Just press File, Create a New Project, and Import the clip that you're working on and mash OK. Then I just take my X-Spline tool and I just draw a shape along the surface of the ground. Normally the shape would be much bigger and would be more representative of the layout of the ground. Um, this is about the only place I could actually put it, uh, put the shape that makes it stay in frame, so this will do for now. Anyways, after I draw the shape, I just track the uh, footage forward. And you'll notice the shape is doing a decent job of staying in two position. It does... Uh, get cut off towards the end but that's okay for this purpose that's all I need if I needed more I'd draw another shape and modify the shape after that just scroll down and match export tracking data use the uh, format after effects transform data and click copy to clipboard go back over to after effects and create a new null object and while you have the null object selected press V on the keyboard to paste the tracking data with the null object uh, selected, match you on the keyboard, and that'll bring up all the key points that it's created. And what I do is I copy the anchor point keyframes onto the position keyframes and, un and unkey the anchor points. Also, unkey the scale and set the anchor points to zero. And that gives me a nice red box in the position that I created. I then rename my null to tracking data. I've imported in several visual effects clips and put them in the elements folder. These are from Video Copilot, but there are ways to achieve this same effect for free. All you need to do is take a black sheet or like a sheet like material, some um, baking flour, uh, a black balloon, and, and what you want to do is tape the sheet to the wall. You fill up the balloon with flour and air, tape the balloon to the sheet, and then uh, put a camera on a tripod and crank up the shutter speed and if you can record 60 frames per second all you do hit record take a needle to the balloon then in after effects just key out the black or change the transfer mode uh, to screen if possible turn off the lights in the house and have a couple of lights pointing at the balloon from the sides i've actually done this before on a couple of videos moving on i take the powder hits and scroll over to where i want the effect to take place then I just put the powder hits on top of the footage. This particular footage is already keyed out. So I grab my tin effect and place it on top of the powder hit. And then I just uh, map out the black and white to reds and different shades so that it matches the footage. Then I just take my lasso tool um, beside the powder hits and lasso it to the tracking data. Then one thing I like to do is a lot of people don't do this is I copy the powder hits, shrink it down to size, and remove the tint. This is much more replicative of squibs that are generally used on Hollywood films. Then I just take a look at it and make sure it looks okay, and that it does. So I just move back into my elements folder and import in another powder hit. By the way, smoke puffs are um, actually more commonly used than powder hits, but I like to use the powder hits because it's more representative of a uh, bullet hit. Anyways, 
So once again, I move to where I want the effect to take place and I place the element on top. Anyways, so once again, I move over to where I want the effect to take place and I place the elements on top. And I like to cut off the first frame or so just because it removes the sparks from the, uh, from the clip. And again, tint the powder to red, lasso it to the tracking data. Then again, duplicate the powder hit and streak it down. Oh yeah, bring the opacity down to around 50% or so. Then just do the exact same thing. All right, now that I have all the blood hits that I need, I take the blood splats clips that I've already imported into the elements folder and decide where and when I want it to take place. Once I decide um, when I want the blood splat clip to appear, I decide where in the frame I want it. So I decided I want it to look like it's shatter in the left shoulder and the blood splatter onto the camera. Once again, I cut off a first, the first few frames from the beginning and fade on the splat. The next thing I do that I don't see many people doing is I take the Gaussian blur effect and drop it onto the blood splat. Because think about it, if something lands on the lens, it will be super blurred and barely recognizable. Some people might even import the footage of a fly landing on their lens on YouTube and say that they caught footage of a ghost, which is a very effective way of getting views. I think I should try that. Anyways, blur the hell out of the splat, oh yeah, and the splat, don't last it to the tracking data. Anyways guys, that's about it. I wanted to once again thank everybody for subscribing. If you ever need any advice or tips on filmmaking that I might can help on, uh, just email me at IndieRiot.com. I wanted to also say that I am by no means the best VFX artist. I just have a pretty good understanding of the concepts. I just wanted to really just, I just wanted to really just share my knowledge and support the filmmaking community. I am always up for collaboration and that type of thing, so just let me know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Take care.